want you to think about your marketing angle. Because again, when you go and talk to people about this, uh, the average person in your congregation, now if you go, hey, we've got an armed security team and we have at least three people here who are trained with firearms and know how to do that and are armed at any given time, you're gonna isolate an awful lot of people in your congregation. I use Thrum targets on the range for all the benefits of steel with none of the drawbacks. They're made in the USA too. Pick up a set to make your shooting more fun and effective. Not my church, John. Okay, maybe you're, you go to gun church, right? Cool, I didn't, right? Like, I mean, there's a diverse understanding and population of that. Now, my congregation never, never wondered about me, right? I was open and upfront about the fact. People were like, Pastor, do you carry a gun at church? I'm like, if I have pants on, with very few exceptions, I have a gun on. So yeah, I have a gun on at church. And they're like, are you worried about the children? Well, for many reasons I'm worried about the children, but not because I have a gun on. That's true. That's true. <laughs> that enigma does that. So, uh, so uh, what I, what I want to say here and, and just make sure that we all recognize is, is that the way that we approach this task matters. Okay? And I want you to encourage, I want to really strongly encourage you to approach the task of church safety from a discipleship and worship perspective. I approach this task from a pastoral perspective because that's my background, right? I want to know as the pastor, is this church a safe environment? Do people feel safe? Do they see enough of what's going on to know that we have a plan, that everything is okay when we have these emergencies? And, you know, and is the plan actionable? Is it in place and is it good? And what that looks like for you might be different than for me. Because, for instance, you might attend a church that's in a downtown area and the you know, you struggle with uh, car break-ins during worship service because there's Mexican Americans about who are looking to score. Okay? Uh, and, and maybe that, it's, it's methed up, right? You know, I, I've been around a lot of meth, and after you've done meth a while, it cooks your brain. It just does. And you'll steal things to get your high. Uh, and, and anybody else been around meth users much? And, and they're good, you know, they can be wonderful people, but the, man, that meth just, just really does mess them up. So it's a, it's a mean, nasty, uh, insidious drug. Uh, and addiction to it is incredibly difficult to break. So uh, maybe that's your struggle. Where I was pastoring in a, a, a suburban neighborhood, that wasn't really our problem. It wasn't really an issue that we dealt with. The parking lot was never a problem. Where the parking lot was a problem for us, and is a problem for you too, is just making sure that somebody's not sitting out in the car having a nervous breakdown and, and crying and, and wondering if they're good enough. And that's the kind of thing you've got to keep an eye on. And so when we would teach uh, on our hospitality team, you know, as worship gets started, make sure somebody just runs the parking lot real quick and make sure everybody's okay. Make sure nobody's sitting in their car wondering if they can come in or nobody's having a crisis out there that we need to know about. 